Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here to talk to you about Schema Puka and how you can go from a data model to a diagram in under five minutes using Heroku. A little bit about myself. My name is Mick Wheeler. I'm five times Salesforce certified. Been in, uh, in the Salesforce ecosystem for about nine years now, starting out as an administrator, learning to code in Apex, becoming a dev, and then moving into the consulting space about four years ago. I work for BrightGen, we're a Salesforce Platinum partner, and I'm based in London in the United Kingdom. So what do I mean by diagram? What I'm talking about here is an entity relationship diagram. An entity relationship diagram is a graphical representation of your Salesforce data model. When I say entity here, I mean Salesforce object. You can see an example of an entity relationship diagram up there on the slide. That's part of the Salesforce files or Salesforce content data model. ERDs are a standard way of displaying data models. So why, why do you want an ERD? What use is it? I mean, first of all, having good documentation of your system is awesome. You can provide it to stakeholders. You can include it in your proposals. Sometimes you need it to be compliant for various rules and legislations. And as the old adage goes, a picture is worth a 1,000 words. Perhaps you built something a long time ago and haven't touched it in a while, or perhaps it was something that somebody else built. Having an entity relationship diagram of your data model can help you and others to understand what you've got. So, so what's the problem? Why is this so difficult? Why do we need things like Schema Puka? So without tools like Schema Puka, it's a manual process. Drawing ERDs by hand can take a long time. Maybe it's quick if you've only got four or five objects to document. But if you've got tens or even hundreds, that can take a long time. And maintaining them is a pain. You make some major changes to part of your data model, and then you've got to go and update that document again. So Salesforce has a tool that can display your entity relationship diagram or your ERD called Schema Builder. Schema Builder is built in, and it can display. But unless you want to make a change to actual data model, you can't show intended changes. There's no easy way to export. I mean, you can take a screen dump and include it. And I saw that in the, the previous presentation, some scheme dumps of schema, of schema Builder there. But there's no nice way to include it in documents. So what is Schema Puka? Schema Puka simply outputs information about your Salesforce data model. It outputs in the Postgres SQL schema format. Schema Puka doesn't store any data. Everything's kept in memory. So once you've finished your session, it's all gone. Schema Puka only has access to the metadata API. So it can't read your actual records. Once you've got your Postgres SQL schema from Schema Puka, you can then go ahead and import that into tools like Lucidchart, which is my preferred tool, or things like Visio or yeah, Win. So why did I even bother building this tool? What's the point of all of this? Mostly to make mine and other people's lives easier. Consultants tend to do a lot of entity relationship diagrams, especially in discovery and pre-sales. So having a quick way to generate entity relationship diagrams is very important. It's also a good way to give back to the Ohana. Building tools like this and providing them free for other people to use is a brilliant way to give back to others. And it's a good excuse to learn some new things. Before I built Schema Puka, I'd never built a Java web app before. So it was a good excuse to learn how to do that. The idea for Schema Puka originally came from a colleague of mine named David Everett. He had built a version of an early version of this in Apex and Visual Force. As you can understand, having this on platform had its limitations. First and foremost, you could only really use it in developer edition orgs or sandboxes, as it, had, it wasn't packaged and it had no test classes. So if you're 
doing a discovery for a client whose org you haven't touched yet, they probably don't want you to be installing random code in their org. So I thought, this is a brilliant idea, but I can improve upon it. I built several iterations. First was just a basic Java console app. It did the job, but wasn't very user friendly. So I built a desktop GUI version using Swing, if anybody's ever played with that before. But still, a desktop app is hard. You need to install it. You need to have Java set up. Maybe it won't work on your specific configuration because it's not been tested, so on and so forth. So the web app or a cloud version was the way to go. So people often ask me about the name, Schema Puka. I'd originally called it Salesforce ERD tool which is pretty descriptive, but not very interesting. So I got talking to Dave Carroll, who's a developer evangelist for Salesforce, at Surfforce in 2016. If you aren't familiar with what Surfforce is, it's a community conference that I co-organize. If you want to know more about that, please come and ask me after this. Got talking to Dave, and he said, you need a better name. Salesforce ERD tool's rubbish. What about something like Schema Puka? So, I thought, yep, that's brilliant. That's going to get people wondering, what is that? So the name stuck. So let's see a demo of this. Enough of me telling you about it. Let's see it in action. So you simply navigate to schemapuka.com. It'll redirect you to the Heroku app. And you can log in. You can log into either a production slash developer org or a sandbox by choosing your instance type from the drop down here. I'm going to be logging into my developer org, so I'm going to choose production. Press login. Now it uses OAuth for authentication, so we're going to get redirected to Salesforce to log in. I'm going to log in here, and I'm going to be redirected back to Schema Puka once Salesforce has authenticated me. Now we can see a list of objects here. We can see the object name, and in brackets, its API name. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a couple of objects here. I'm going to choose account and contact. You can see that they're being populated to this selected objects text box. You can add objects by typing them in manually if you like. So I'm going to put a comma and add opportunity. Be aware that these need to be the API name, not the object's friendly name. Finally, we've got a pick list choosing whether we want to show only relationships or whether we want to show all of the fields that we have available. As you can understand, if you've got an object with 50 or 100 fields, that's going to clutter up your diagram. And if you only really want to see the connection between objects, choosing show only relationships is the better option. That's what I'm going to choose here. Once we've chosen that, we simply hit Submit, and Schema Puka will go off and generate our output. So we've got two options with what we can do here. We can either copy and paste this, or we can download it if we wish to use it later. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Lucidchart and actually create an ERD. I'm going to choose New Document. Once that's loaded up, I'm going to go to the Shapes toolbox and choose Entity Relationship and press Save. Now that I've got the Entity Relationship Shape toolbox, I can import the output Schema Puka just gave me. We're going to choose Postgres SQL, press Next. We're going to paste in what we've grabbed from Schema Puka, and we're going to hit Import. We can now see the objects we've just imported. We've got account, contact, and opportunity. And we get a little preview of the output here. I'm going to go ahead and drag these on. Drag on contact. Let's just zoom out a little bit so we can see. So you can see that Lucidchart has automatically generated the relationships between these objects. You can see here with these lines. What we can also do. Now that we've got our Salesforce objects, perhaps we're proposing a change to this data model. So we can go ahead and drag on a new table. We'll just call this test. 
And we can link it up just by dragging to fields on other objects. We can obviously modify the existing ones to add new fields to relate to this new object. We could even change the color of this to denote that this is a new object. And that's it, really. Once you've got the diagram in Lucidchart, you can print it out, you can export it in various formats, you can include it in your Google Docs. It's very easy. So now that we've got that, let me explain a little bit about how I built it. So as I've said, it's a Java web app. It's built with Java, and it runs on Heroku. I'm using the standard things, Maven for dependency management, Spring Boot for bootstrapping. I'm using the force.com WSC for metadata API access, a library called Scribe for OAuth 2, Spring MVC with Timeleaf and the Lightning Design System for the user interface, and GitHub and Heroku pipelines for basic continuous integration. I'm going to explain in a little bit more detail each one of these pieces. So first thing we need to do is authenticate to Salesforce. So we're going to do what some people call the OAuth dance. We're going to request a token. For, we're going to provide a client identific identification number and key to Salesforce. The Salesforce is going to ask the user to log in and going to provide us with a token. Doing it this way, SchemaPuker never actually sees your Salesforce credentials. Salesforce is the one validating that you have an you have a legitimate account. I'm simply getting a token back that I can use to make requests on your behalf. To do this with Salesforce, we have what's called a connected app. You need one connected app per external application. So in my developer org, I have a connected app for Schema Puka, and that's where I get my client key and secret. Now that we've authenticated, we need some metadata. So I'm using the force.com WSC or Web Services Connector, as it's known. The Web Services Connector is something you build yourself using the partner WSDL. It makes accessing the SOAP APIs from Java incredibly easy. Be aware that the WSC, since it's something you need to build using the partner WSDL, is not available as a Maven dependency. So you'll need to include a local repository in order to deploy it to Heroku. If you want to know more about the WSC or the APIs, you can go and chat to the integration guys in the developer forest over there. So once I've got the metadata, I need to loop through it and build the Postgres SQL schema. Now we need to make it pretty. We need to show the users something and allow them to interact with the application. So I'm using, as I've said, Spring MVC and Timeleaf. These use the model view controller paradigm that is used in Visual Force. If you can build a Visual Force page, you can use Spring MVC. It's simply HTML with custom tags, similar to Visual Force, and contains a Java controller for actual surfacing of information, the same as Visual Force. Now, to make it pretty, I'm using the Lightning Design System. There's tons of documentation on the Lightning Design System, as there is on Spring and Timeleaf as well. So I'm including their CSS to skin the application. And as you can see, it, it looks like lightning. You can find more information about LDS by talking to the guys in the uh, camp design area. Finally, we need to put it all in the cloud. This is, this is the exciting bit. I'm using Heroku, as I've said, to host the application. It's quick, it's easy, it's cheap. You can. Use it for free. There are free tiers. Um, I'm using the base, basic paid tier to, in order to have SSL for the application, but you can try it for free. It obviously, as we're aware, if we've used Heroku, it scales. It's very easy to deploy to, so on and so forth. So I've got a basic continuous integration set up using GitHub and Heroku pipelines. So how that works is I've got two branches in my GitHub repository, one for develop and one for master, master being the production branch. Every time I make a change in GitHub and commit that change and push it up, Heroku will automatically build the application, either in a container for development or in a container for production. So that means I can test changes very quickly and easily. 
you can also easily promote a change or a application container from development to production within Heroku itself. It's very, very easy. I don't need any sort of authentic, uh, sorry, orchestration tool like Jenkins. This is all just a connection between Heroku and GitHub. I actually watched a very good demo of this in the developer forest yesterday um, and learned something new, that you can actually have uh, pull requests create their own little containers for testing of features and merging back into your developer master branch. So I highly recommend going to chat to those guys if you're interested in that sort of thing. They're also giving out some free hours for Heroku, so if you want to try things out without paying any money. So let's recap. What have we learned here? Schema Puka allows you to generate Postgres SQL schema from your Salesforce data model. From there, you can import it into Lucidchart, ERWin, Visio, so on and so forth. I suppose you could also import it into a Postgres database if you wanted to build a copy of your Salesforce data model. However, this is not why I've built the tool, and it's untested. But if you try it, I'd love to hear it. From there, once you've got your diagram in Lucidchart, or Visio, or whatever you'd like to use, the world is your oyster. You can do anything with this thing. You can import, you can include it in Google Docs, you can export it, so on and so forth. As I've said, it makes generating entity relationship diagrams incredibly easy. The other thing to take away from this is you can build stuff like this. I'd never built a web app before I built this tool. Wasn't a huge learning curve. I didn't have to worry about setting up Tomcat or worrying about forwarding ports or any of this sort of thing you would need to do if you had this hosted on an, your own server somewhere. And you don't have to code in Java. You can code in Node or Python or Ruby, various other languages. Heroku is incredibly easy in that regard. So finally, how do you get it? Simple. Go to schemapuka.com. You'll be presented with the exact same screen I showed you earlier. And you can start using it. If you'd like more information or some links to blogs and articles about how I built Schema Puka and the tools that I used, you can either scan the QR code up there or go to mickwheels.net slash Dreamforce, and all of the information is laid out there for you. So thank you. Got two minutes left if anybody's got any questions. Otherwise, I'm happy to answer questions after this. No? Okay. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>